Let's get more on the story. Joining us from Washington is Lynn Kwok, a Southeast Asia expert at the Brookings Institute. Lynn, thanks so much for joining us here on the program. Uh, China's never really clarified its ambitions in the South China Sea. It doesn't admit or disclose. Uh, that's right. Um, China's controversial dash line uh, may be interpreted in one of two ways. The first way um, explains, one could see um, the line as a claim to the wide expanse of uh, waters within the dash line. Um, another more limited way of seeing the dash line is merely as a claim to the land features ca uh, contained therein, as well as maritime zones generated from them, compliant with the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. Um, so officially, China's um, claim is not clear. However, its actions uh, suggest that it might be adopting the more expansive of the two interpretations. Uh, this may be seen at perhaps most, uh, perhaps from your, uh, from the recent warning off of your reporter um, from features in the Spratly Islands, um, namely Mischief Reef, and. Um, however might most clearly be seen by its uh, massive land reclamation activities in the South China Sea. Now these do not actually enhance its claims under international law. Um, changing small reefs into large artificial islands does not increase its maritime entitlements. However, what it does uh, do is to uh, enhance China's ability to uh, claim and con uh, to control and assert its jurisdiction I, over that, the waters in the region. Is that uh, what's at the heart of the tensions between China and its neighbours and indeed the United States? Yes, um, that's certainly part of it. China and uh, five other claimants uh, lay claim to uh, the features in the South China Sea as well as so they question who owns these features. There is also a dispute over what sort of maritime entitlements these features should be entitled to generate. There are also nationalistic overtones um, that the dispute has uh, developed over the years. Um, the, um, China, China as well uh, is interested in the features not only for their value in and of themselves, but also um, in terms of uh, enhancing its ability to control the region and of course ASEAN countries as well most ASEAN countries as well as the United States is um, as interested as China is in uh, so China is very interested in asserting control and jurisdiction over that area and ASEAN countries and the United States are interested indeed. in denying China that control it, there is also um, a dispute for the United States in terms of freedom navigation the United States wants to insist that um, all countries should have a right to freedom of navigation in the region. China but, denies that it is... Uh, well, well, one of the things, is, I mean, from, from China's point of view, the U.S. Mm -hmm. is aggravating the situation by undertaking these freedom of navigation operations. I mean, they're saying, uh, we've got a dispute with our neighbours. Why is the third party getting involved? Um, yes, I think from China's point of view, um, the United States should stay out of the um, dispute. However, we may look at the dispute narrowly in terms of sovereignty uh, dispute and that the United States has made clear that it takes no position on. However, if we look at the dispute more generally, and I think this must be the correct way of looking at it, uh, many countries have an interest in freedom of navigation in the South China Sea. And in that respect, that's what the United States is getting involved in. Um, but the also the United, United States, States sorry, please. but also the United States is getting involved in uh, you know protecting its allies in the region and and China's concern is why is the United States interfering in this way well as you point out um, the United States is um, seeking to uh, uh, to be loyal to its uh, commitments so the United States has for decades provided a security umbrella in the region but more than that, however, the United States is also, in its view, protecting freedom of navigation. And I think the best defense of its freedom of navigation operations um, was uh, stated and most clearly by the then uh, Assistant Secretary of State for Oceans, uh, John Negroponte, in 1986. And in an address, he mentioned that the right to exercise um, freedom, of the, uh, freedom to navigate the uh, world's oceans 
is not a pro provocative one, but one that is a legitimate, peaceful assertion of a legal position. And so I think the United States is saying that under international law, it is certainly entitled to ply the world's um, oceans um, outside of territorial seas, and um, uh, in which it is entitled to innocent passage. And um, you, uh, China should be respecting international law. We'll have to leave it there. Thanks so much, Lin Kwok, for joining us.